uh, we beat CLI. Um, I want to talk to you, or sorry, my name is Josh Smith. I'm a software engineer for a company called Dice, uh, the job board place. And, you know, um, we use WordPress to push content back and forth all over to, um, you know, the Java application is WordPress content. And we just, that's one of the things that we provide for our, our users. Um, Is somebody clicking on this? No? Okay. Okay, so during the December meetup, you know, the kind of the theme of the meetup was bringing your tools and tips and tricks and things like that. And one of the things I suggested was get good with your tools. Get good with your PHP Storm or your Sublime Text. Um, this is how we make money. And the more efficient you can be, the better you will, the more money you will make. And I assume people want to make money. So. Um, I suggested that one of my tools was this WPCLI, and somebody asked the question, why would I want to use the WPCLI or any CLI if, I, if what I need to do is an admin as well? And I, I kind of didn't have the time to get into um, the differences, but it's about picking the right tool at the right time for the right task. And um, so there's, it's not one or the other, they're not mutually exclusive. You're gonna need these tools for different applications. And I had a kind of an interesting application come up about a month ago. I thought I'd just um, outline it and put it into the talk. So, so just to make sure that we're on the same page, a CLI, as in WPCLI, stands for the CLI part stands for a command line interface. It's how we're talking to this application. Um, and then GUI, GUI, Everyone calls it GUI, graphical user interface. It's the screen, it's like the admin screen, it's buttons, it's text fields, and you're moving around kind of on like this piece of paper, this th uh, two dimensional kind of interface. But um, the command line and terminal, as it is in Mac, it's kind of a throwback to um, early computing. And uh, like the DMV is always a good example of what a terminal is. Um, you're interfacing and typing on this plastic box, like at the DMV. Um, with, it looks like a, a modern computer, but it's actually not. It's sending um, data back to a mainframe. That mainframe is doing the computations to send it back. That's what a terminal is. It's similar to what we have here. I'm not. This is not WordPress. I'm interfacing with WordPress through this command line interface, um, and it's going to allow us to do some pretty interesting things, especially at scale. Um, and then you might be thinking, well, I can just open up this admin panel. And I guess the details aren't super important, but you know you can open up screen options and change the default. If you want to start editing 20 posts at a time, you can change that up to almost 1,000 posts at a time. But when you're talking um, tens of thousands, or even 1,000, you might time out at 1,000 posts. Um, so command lines are a, a way that you can edit posts, manipulate posts, change with admins at a much, much greater number than uh, just with the, the admin area. Here's a better example of a command line interface, kind of boring, unassuming, right? Um, what do I do with this thing? They all look different. Everyone has their own kind of way they want their terminal set up. And then, the, of course, the admin area, kind of boring. But so now we're getting into what we're going to talk about. The waterfall method, right? Software development, it's one of the methodologies. You do one task in order, complete that task, then you start another one in order. You don't get to start task three until task two is complete. So um, that's fine, a lot of software and a lot of just stuff that you do around your house, that's how you do it. You don't start things until you finish the previous one. But um, what we wanna do is become more efficient and a lot of these tasks that we're gonna do they're boring or tedious. So if we want to go through and update a post with the admin area, we're going to have to do it by ourselves. Well, I could be checking email. I want, I want an assistant to do this stuff for me, this tedium and this monotony. I want something else to do that for me. So I'm going to set the computer up. It's going to run this side, and I'm going to go over and do the human being stuff. I'm going to re respond to emails, finish design, edit CSS, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But the computer is going to be over here doing this stuff on the left, and I'm going to be doing some, something creative or something um, more interesting. 
Okay, so I said I had a problem. My problem was that we wanted at work, we wanted to update the look and layout of our most popular blog and give the users, the readers, a more interesting look. So you should be thinking post templates right now. We wanted to update the post template for this site to just as to change the way that these posts look for um, our, our users. I also don't get the luxury of destroying data because it's kind of a heart and soul of um, you know, 10 years of blogging or whatever. People protect that pretty, pretty tightly. And then I didn't get to change single PHP, the default, um, the default PHP template that we use to display the single post. Um, I don't want to get down the road in a week or in a few days and find out that the things that I changed were actually used elsewhere too. You'll, you'll probably start seeing this with old legacy stuff and um, products that have been around for a really long time. <clears throat> so I needed to update about 13,000 posts. That's a lot of posts. Um, doing it 999 times through the admin is not an option. Doing it by hand is not an option either. <coughs> I also needed to update um, remove, I'm sure you've seen this, but in the post editor, people write posts and then they put, say, the first image or an image in there when it doesn't really belong in the, po in the content. So you'll see um, images that aren't really content, they're just kind of, I didn't know where else to put it. And now we're starting to get away from structured data and good engineering practices. If it's a featured image, we'll make it a featured image. If we have two featured, we'll make two featured image areas. But don't be blending your content with your images and things like that. So I needed to also separate that. So I needed to update um, over 10,000 posts, post template, and then I need to, to separate some content or some images <coughs> with the content. So I knew WPCLI can do that. So came up with a plan. I'm only going to add things. I'm only going to add new files, new template files. And then I'm going to preserve that data. That data is very valuable. <coughs> so WPCLI is the, my tool of choice for these kind of things. Um, and some, some things I know about using WPCLI. Um, I know that I can get a list of these posts out of WordPress. The WordPress installation, I know that I can get that out. If I type in WP post list, into my command line, into my terminal, whatever, um, it's going to return to me a nice, easy to read tabular list of all these posts. And so now that table, columns and rows, very easy to read. It's kind of Excel spreadsheet like if you if you you know familiar with spreadsheets. Um, but I also know I also know that I can get I can change the way that that output is displayed to me. If I type in WP post list dash dash format IDs, I'm telling WordPress in this via the command line interface that I want to list these posts, but I only want their IDs. And what that's going to return to me in the command line is a space separated list of all the IDs, these integers that I'm going to use somewhere else. And just before we get going any further, um, when I'm saying WP post list, this is kind of the syntax that you're going to use in um, dealing with the command line. I'm saying WordPress, WP is a shortcut um, to the application. I'm saying WordPress, we're talking about the post context. Okay, so listen up. List out all of these to me. That's the action. The list part is the action. I'm saying WordPress, we're talking about posts, list them out to me. And that's what it does. And then when I'm formatting this output, WordPress, I'm talking in the post context, list them out, but only by their IDs. I only need their IDs. <clears throat> this is where it's going to be useful. OK. Come on, don't die on me. Tabular data. So this is WP post list. I've listed them out. This is a table, tabular table, right? So columns, it doesn't matter that you can't yeah, that's where you get these such remote uh, displays. It's a table. It's easy for human beings to read. I need a list. These are integers. Of, it's a list of space-separated integers. So 
100, 105, 107, 108. That's going to be useful later. <clears throat> I also know some other things. Not only can I list these, these um, posts out by their IDs, but I know that I can update the post. I can update these posts if I, fit, if I feed, as an argument, a list of IDs. You give WP post update a WordPress. We're in the post contest context. We're going to update these posts. These are the posts I'm, I'm going to give you. I'm going to supply you with this list of um, IDs. And so WordPress will go through, or the command line will go through it and update each one of those posts with another argument that you don't see up here. My remote's dying. <coughs> WP post update. Here's this list, WP post list format IDs, right? That's kind of, think of it kind of like a placeholder or a variable or something. With a list of IDs, we're gonna update post status to draft. Whatever that post status was, it's gonna change to draft. These two are equivalent, WP post update, hey WordPress. We're talking about the post context, go update these one, four, four, five, six IDs and change that post status to draft. Whatever that post status was before, we're gonna change it to draft. Mine, when I did WP post it, update the post list, I changed the um, page number. <coughs> I think I gave somebody control and they can, they can scroll through. Okay, so the, these are equivalent. So when I run this on the command line, they'll run through. But the, that's a, oh sorry, I need to explain something. This, dollar sign, you'll notice two things here on this command up here. The dollar sign and the parentheses. Now remember back in math class where you had the parentheses, that's order of operations. That means do this command first. Do this, ex execute this command first because it's parentheses. The dollar sign says this is a new command. Um, this is not syntax for the command one. This is a separate and unique command. Do that one first. Here are the parentheses, do that first. Okay, so the two syntactical kind of differences there between a regular command when you're combining these things. Okay, so remember I said I also had to um, remove that first image out of every single post. This isn't the exact um, script that I use, but one of the things about WPCLI is it can execute scripts, PHP, that aren't even in your WordPress installation. I had this little, um, I don't know, 10 lines of code sitting on my desktop. I pointed the path, WP eval, to the path of this script and it executed this script. So I'm saying WordPress eval, execute this script on my installation, wherever I launched WPCLI from. <clears throat> so it's very custom work. Not only could I combine two built-in commands as in before, but I can write my own script and execute those on my installation. Very handy stuff, very powerful too. Something like this, I ran it through um, 13,000 posts, and um, I, it's very possible that you can delete the whole thing break things, very, very possible. Um, so just be careful, it's very powerful, but you can you know, break it's kind of like fire, burn, burn the house down. <clears throat> so it's very nice to have the ability to run some arbitrary piece of code, just go through it. Okay, so those are two kind of examples of combining custom scripts and built-in scripts, but there are caveats to getting started with this stuff. Um, one of the things that I noticed going through um, someone who pays attention to language and thinks that there's a precision in language. When I was looking up commands on the documentation, um, it says options. An ID is under options. It doesn't really seem like an option. It doesn't seem optional. It seems awfully required. And when you start comparing this documentation set to what you see on the codex, you'll see parameters that will say required or parameters that string option or something like that. And when this says optional, it threw me off. So if you're just getting started with it, just be aware that this is a new-ish project, a couple years old, um, and it doesn't have as many eyeballs looking at it and you know, checking on it all the time. 
You can also see the same thing if you are typing WP WordPress CLI, I need help, WP help in your command line. You'll get something that looks like this. Uh, this says synopsis, and then it says WP command. Um, but then there's a list of subcommands. So it's this semantic thing. If you're looking for precision, you, you may get tripped up like me right here. So this is, I think maybe this is subcommand, or maybe these are commands. But anyway, this is what they're talking about right here. Just FYI, just be aware that this is a new product or new-ish out there. Um, so getting started, um, it's fairly easy to get started with this. Google uh, is, install WPCLI in your or your WordPress installation, and I think it's like one or two lines you can copy and paste, <coughs> paste it in your terminal. It'll install it and then move it into the right location on your computer. It's very simple, and then you'll have access to it. But I think it's important to start getting into this, especially for like budding developers and budding engineers. You're going to get an appreciation for the amount of work that it goes to build something like WordPress, to build something like a command line tool. And you're gonna get you're gonna get a peek at the guts of WordPress and you know how much work these people, this is still made from human beings and we're fallible. And so you'll get a good appreciation for um, the power of something like this. Okay, so you guys want to demo this new? Let's see if I can pull this off. Okay. Did you guys see that? Probably not, huh? Workshops, case I can see that. Okay, so I'm going to type in WP host list. All right, so I just typed this guy in right here. Here's that tag of the data. Notice this column says, it, they're all published, right? <clears throat> so this is a bunch of faker press kind of fake posts that I created. And then, <clears throat> so I typed in WP post update, and that's how fast it's working. That's about 200 posts, I think there's a little bit more. But you can see how it's, um, <clears throat> just at that level, it, it went much faster than um, updating from the admin areas where you have to click around, update, maybe time out or whatever. So um, this was the simple post. Um, I, changed, I changed it to publish, but either way, it just went through and updated the same post status. Um, but now you're starting to see the scale. So if you're starting to work with hundreds or dozens of posts, you're going to start seeing some value from just that economies of scale for that with everything all at once, and do it all at once. But this is also where you start getting into scripts. So when you buy these premium um, WordPress hosting, this is probably how they're doing it. They're writing scripts. They wrote a script um, a few years ago, install, the, install WordPress, um, install the database, download something from Git, all these things, delete plugins, add plugins, activate things. This is how, it's, this is how you do it. Um, a lot of it, so um, it's a good intro to programming and kind of the command line and, and tools that you use to make money. So that's all I have on that. Um, if you have any questions, it's supposed to be on that. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, what do you got? Yeah, is there a way to do like a dry run and have a preview of what you're about to? Yeah, I think it is. Right, so it's like dash dash dry run. Oh, really? Okay. I think that works. I've seen it. I don't know. I just jump <coughs> in head first. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> 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 Uh, there's actually a guy that did something along those lines. It's like a database restore that he does. It's kind of like a checkpoint. Yeah. Uh, Binary Gary, look it up. Binary Gary? Yeah. Okay. He actually did a little WPCI command where like you you save a point in the database. If you watch it, you literally restore it. Right oh, back. that's awesome. Like, so many people are building so many things off this. That's, that's great. Tyler? Yeah. Um, 
with the with the thing where you were running a PHP script, was there anything to run like a particular function was in there or a method on a class, or are you just running the thing? So I did I did WordPress functions like you saw up there. It was kind of I think this was a query that wasn't the exact one, but you saw some of the arguments for I think it was a WP query like. Post per page 100 was one of the things up there. So you can run WordPress stuff, even though that script does not work in WordPress. It's almost like WPCLI, which is living in that in your WordPress installation, kind of reaches out, but it keeps one foot inside WordPress, executes oh. this stuff out there, even with WordPress functionality, even though it's not in the folder. Here. Super cool. Yeah, very, very powerful because now you have access like WP Query and all those classes and what all the powerful stuff that WordPress does. You yeah. can share that, it's a lot easier to share that or just delete it. I delete it as soon as I was done with that script, I deleted it. I don't want to accidentally run something to go delete the next first image out of all my posts. <coughs> um, yeah, cool stuff. Yeah. The else have any questions? So, that, that vowel is it like? Uh, just like loading headless WordPress or something, and then at what, do you know like at what point is it executing like um, some kind of action or? I don't know. I don't think it's headless or I don't know. Do anybody else know? I don't know. I, I'm sure it's something like that. Yeah, that, I, I, I bet it is too because it's pretty fast. I want to try that out. That looks fun. I wonder if it's a way to compare it. <coughs> just like so much better. I'm a super Okay, that's cool. Thank super you. Thanks. From whatever. Yeah.